I shall start the presentation, right? So, and I'm, I'm just learning on this, so I'm just going to click this. Okay. So the first thing is I've got to give you a quick overview of the process in terms of timing of different events. So we're running these uh, uh, um, sessions for you, but it goes back right back to early uh, 2012 when we were actually preparing to do the full 10-year long-term plan. So every month we have uh, had council workshops. The full council have sat down. We've brought in the staff involved in every single one of, I think it's 53 major areas of operating budgets. We've looked at the levels of service for each of those uh, departments. We've looked at uh, that levels of service as just our way of expressing if it's a library, for example, and it's open eight hours a day. If we wanted, or the community wanted to open it 11 hours a day, uh, that would be a 12% increase, if you like, in the level of service that we're offering. So a level of service is just a measure of uh, how many hours, uh, what specifics are surrounding something. And our intention is uh, to give you an easy measure of what we're doing. Are we doing more or are we doing less? So that's what we've been doing for the last year, once a month. Then uh, we adopted a draft plan after some discussions with government in uh, February. And that's the three-year plan that we're looking across today. You might wonder why we chose three years. And one of the reasons for that is even in a 10-year plan, the first three years are always very accurately forecast. So the budgets that we do for three years out in the 10-year plan, those numbers aren't likely to change dramatically unless something extremely unforeseen turned up. And the seven uh, years out after that are much more aspirational. That's really more about the timing of projects than it is about the specific funding, but we'll make some assumptions in there. So that seven-year piece is out. But having said that, we will be back to do another 10-year uh, plan, I think in two years is when it comes up. So it's always the middle year of a council's term that a council will do that. So it's a three-year plan. Um, it's been adopted, but it's a draft, and that means uh, we want your feedback. And that's what this meeting and a number of other meetings will be about. People can go online and uh, they can give us feedback there as well. And uh, we've also got underlying this an agreement that we made with the government in order not to do a 10-year plan and they were looking for us to do a one-year plan, we said, no, we would consider doing a three-year plan. We wouldn't go as low as one year, but we would only do that if the government would tie down two of the big areas of uncertainty for us. And they really surround the uh, horizontal infrastructure, so the roads and the pipes under the roads. And traditionally, the government split in a post-emergency situation has been 60-40. 60 percent 60 government will meet those costs above any insurance that you might have in place and 40 percent would be met by the local authority. Now it's been that way for more than 10 years. I think it was 19, was it 89 or thereabouts when that number was set? It goes back quite a long way. And the government had indicated, well that's not set in stone, you know. And we felt, well it needs to be set in stone. It's such a fundamental issue for us going forward. So we'll do a shorter version of the plan uh, to maintain some of the flexibility the government's arguing that it needs for its own books and accounting processes. But we want to tie down those two variables. Firstly, the 60-40 split around infrastructure. And I'm pretty confident, um, Mr. Marriott, Mr. Anderson will be involved in that, but I'm pretty confident, as much as we can say, that we should get that. But to have it tied down is crucial for us, because as long as that's out there, it's a threat. And the other one is, what is the share of the Crown's anchor projects? As you know, what we did was we put forward to government the uh, central city plan, which had a large number of those big assets. But we took a different view to central government around the scale of the assets and where they should be located. And we went out and consulted with you, our community, on that. And we tied down the local contribution to those projects. And that was a very important piece of work for us because it's really given us a place to negotiate from with central government that we wouldn't have had had we not done that community process. And I think that's really protecting us as uh, ratepayers from uh, significant cost increases. Government has made a lot of noises about we should be paying more here and there. But we're quite determined that, look, if you want to have a, a central city stadium that's covered and seats 35,000 people, well, that's great. But as a community, we're prepared to rebuild 
an open stadium. I think the one we put on the books was still 30, was it 35? It was 30, just 30. We said an open 30,000 seat stadium on the current stadium site. So we're, we're arguing, look, government, we, we think that's a really good idea, we like that stadium, but it's not sustainable for us as a community to have to put in that extra money. Stadiums are not, uh, they don't produce a lot of cash flow for the organisation. It's very difficult servicing that debt. That's operating costs. And I think it's fair to say that we are, our greatest concern would be that we end up at the end of the rebuild with operating costs that uh, are going to be a burden forever on the community. So that's the other side of the argument with government. We just want to make sure we've got all of those numbers tied down uh, around the council crown cost sharing. And our position actually is quite firm. If you want to go further than the amount that we had allocated as a community, that's your, uh, that's your right, central government. But if you're not putting that in, we'll drop back to the scale of facilities that our community has already accepted through consultation. So we should have those both tied down by the uh, end of April. Then we'll go into public hearings on the plan. So if you want to come and make a submission and talk your, or argue your point to us, that's the place to do that. And then by the end of uh, June, by law, we have to adopt the plan and we strike the rates on the uh, 1st of July. Okay, this is the total commitment to the uh, big 10 anchor projects, $892 million. Now, of course, a portion of that, a significant portion of that is uh, insurance money, uh, and uh, a significant uh, portion is also a degree of betterment, because we've got to take those projects up to a higher standard. We're not prepared to uh, move back into community facilities that are below the new building standard. We think that we should be rebuilding everything to 100%. Uh, our argument is that we should be leading and by example, but also um, if we don't have to have buildings at 100% of the new building standard, then why have a new building standard? Why not set it at 67%? Why not set it lower? In other words, we're not in a position to argue where new building standards should be. That's set by the appropriate agencies, but we do think that as a community we should support that level. So that's $892 million, and a, a, another portion of that money was money that had already been budgeted out into the future for uh, the projects, because a number of these projects we were going to do anyway. What's happened is that the, uh, the timing has essentially shifted. The major projects are the convention centre, the stadium, central city car parks, the town hall, council's position on the town hall is different to that of uh, the CCDU and Sarah. We actually believe that we should, if we can affordably, retain our existing town hall do so. Uh, we think it is not only an historic and uh, unique building, uh, but the, the majority of our community also have a sense of value around that building. It's got a unique set of acoustics. It's in the top five in the world. Um, and uh, I would certainly uh, like to see that retained. We're not at the point where we have the final engineering stuff on that, and that's when we'll know the final costs. And there's a debate around whether we should retain just the main auditorium or the hay and the other pieces as well, and that, that has yet to be completed. And uh, the new central library, which is going to be in a different location, it'll be on the corner of Colombo Street and uh, Gloucester Street on the edge of the square. Uh, so that means that the existing library in Central is going to be demolished. And the Avon River Park, which is essentially uh, a project to which we've committed around $6 million from memory, and the government's putting in $90 million. So we would, I was down there this morning on the edge of the Avon River, and I've described it as, uh, as you can only describe it, as Central Government's gift to the people of Christchurch. Um, They've determined that that is a project that should be the first off the blocks and, uh, and it should be a project that they want to do and they're prepared to pay for it. So we're not trying to turn our back on the, on the uh, beneficence of government. We think that this is a unique time for the city. We're getting billions of dollars of spend which we wouldn't have otherwise got. So we're conscious of trying to walk that path between getting maximum value out of central government uh, but also ensuring that we are not shortchanging ourselves and we're protecting ourselves into the future. The square, transport and suburban interchanges, uh, rebuild of the art gallery, well, what we're doing there is actually putting it on 
the uh, latest version of uh, shock absorbers for large buildings. What, what are they called, those things? The base isolators, which are... And as a result of putting it on base isolators, you might say, well, why are you spending that money on the library... I'm sorry, on the art gallery. It was perfectly good. But as a result of the earthquakes, uh, it means that we cannot now get international art exhibitions into our city unless we are able to show that we're going to be putting them in a building uh, which meets the highest international standards. So we're by base isolating the building. It's going to take us a couple of years to do that. We've had to buy a bit of land uh, down on the uh, east side of the, uh, of the building simply because when you base isolate, if you get a big shake, the buildings can move for a metre or so. So you've got to build a <clears throat> bit of room around them. Uh, Southwest Library and Service Centre, it's a new project, a new library out in one of the growth areas out in the southwest of the city. We've made a commitment to rebuild an aquatic facility in the east of the city uh, to replace the uh, loss of QE2. That'll be uh, built by insurance money out of that. And also we've got an athletic track which is insured, but we still have to determine the final location for that. So those are the big projects. Looking now at uh, the uh, rate increase, and what we're proposing uh, in the 13-14 uh, year is a total rate increase for new, sorry, for existing uh, rate payers of around 6.67. That's made up of the rate increase of 4.74%, plus on top of that, there's a special uh, earthquake charge on there, essentially. So that's the uh, rate increases that we're talking about, and it's important to give a bit of a comparison this is probably getting into your stuff, isn't it, Tony? Is that what you were pointing for? Okay, that's cool. So, yeah, I'll get Tony Marriott up to, to take you through this stuff, and I think Paul's also going to be speaking to us. And at the end of that, there's an opportunity for uh, us to dig into some of the questions that you might have. But the, I'd, I'd like, the one point I'd like to make here is if you look at where we're tracking compared to those other metros that we've pulled out for the uh, uh, comparison, you'll see we're looking pretty good in my view, compared to uh, those other cities. We keep the advantage that we enjoy with our rates. But, Tony, I, I should hand over to you, mates. Two quick points uh, on the rates. Uh, we've tried to say for rates, what's our normal operation? What would it normally cost to run the business if we hadn't had an earthquake? We, we were predicting rate increases prior to the earthquake of, of around 4.25% for the next uh, 4, 4.25%. Four you can see this year for normal business it's 4.74, so only half a percent above what we were predicting prior to the earthquake. So we're really trying to keep our rates levels the same as they would have been at our normal rating levels. And the extra 1.93 was just the special earthquake levy that's on for five years, which Paul will talk a little bit about. And on, on that slide that's on the screen now, the average residential rates, we are the, currently the lowest, and over the life of this plan, Hamilton is predicted to get lower than us, but we will still be the second lowest in, in the country. Just quickly talk on the, on the major capital projects. So we've got the, the normal, normal continuing capital projects and just some of the big projects this year. Finishing the Botanic Gardens Visitor Centre, uh, finishing the Ferrymead Bridge, that's uh, mid-2015 aiming to build a new library in Belfast. Uh, that'll be finished about 14, 15. Upgrading the Akaroa and Wainui wastewater, not upgrading, upgrading the Akaroa wastewater system, putting in a wastewater system in Wainui. And uh, start, starting work on the Northern Arterial, getting the link from Cranford Street uh, to QE2 and back to the motorways, so big projects. And, and probably a, a flagship project for the city is, is the cycle, cycle network and the big commitment to cycleways uh, that we're proposing in the next three years. So that's kind of the, the normal business. The Mayor talked about the uh, major community facilities. I'll just touch on a couple more where there is some work happening. Uh, one is the convention centre, which is in the uh, location of where the central library was, the government life building back into the square. Uh, that's at the stage now where the, they've been out to uh, request for information, a request for proposal. They've got down to a short list of three now. They're at the stage where they're just finalising the scope of the project 
uh, whether we've got the right size. And so you'll, you'll hear something more about the Convention Centre probably April, May. The um, multi-sport facility, which is the swimming pool, the replacement of QE2, plus an indoor stadium on the Canterbury Brewery uh, site. Next week, we're actually going out for expressions of interest for the design of that. So that project's starting to get underway. And, and really, I suppose, I think you touched on all the rest, Mr Mayor, so we're fine. Facilities rebuild. Uh, the council's no different to most people in the city. We, we had a lot of damaged facilities as well. 1,600 of them, actually. Probably, not probably, it's going to take five years for us to repair all of those or make decisions around being demolished and um, in rebuilding. Council last year, as the Mayor talked about, worked on its top 12. We had to make some decisions around our major projects. We did that. This year, uh, we've, uh, we're working on what we call the next tier, which is the social housing and what I call all of the community facilities, so the service centres, the swimming pools and the community halls, the major community halls. That's the program we're working on to get through those in the next year. You might have read in today's paper where we're um, going, going to the market asking for the, some new social housing to be uh, constructed on land, on vacant land that we have. So we're, it's, a big, um, it's a big project for us. And then the infrastructure rebuild, that's, uh, well, it's 2.6 billion, isn't it, Paul? That's the latest figure. I, I see in today's paper, somebody's an article, some say it'll go to 4 million, it won't go to 4 million, there's a lot of... 4 uh, billion. 4 billion, thank you. I'd love it to go to 4 million. Yeah. Near action. <laughs> it won't go to 4 billion. Uh, there's a lot of work being done and there's a, there's a lot of investigation and, and we're, we're getting a far more confidence around, around the numbers and there's no way that the City Council will do any agreement with the government around funding until we have that confidence because we obviously can't take a risk on behalf of the ratepayers. So our share of that is 1.3 uh, billion and Paul you're going to talk a little about this is all you now, isn't it? So Paul will, will take you through the expenditure and, and I think what's the most important thing Paul will talk about is our financial strategy because I stand here as CEO saying I don't want to be the CEO and, and I know Bob doesn't want to be the Mayor and Paul the CFO that there's, the city can't do anything for the next 30 years because they used up all their reserves, sold all their assets to fund the earthquake and so We've really tried to track a pathway that we can keep going, the city can keep moving forward and bring fence to the earthquake costs and that we can afford them. And that's what Paul will take you through now. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony, Mr Mayor. Um, so I'm, my name's Paul Anderson. I'm General Manager Corporate Services at the Council. And um, what that means in simple terms is um, my team's worked with the rest of Council to, on this plan to work out how much it's going to cost and where are we going to get that money from. Um, so I just want to take you through a few slides. That's a simple way of saying what the financial strategy is for the council over the next um, three years and then on for the next uh, 30 odd because the debt that we're taking on will take some time to repay. This first slide that we've got um, shows you the difference between what council's budgets were pre-earthquake and what the budgets are now. So if you look at the um, the, the chunks of the bar at the bottom below the grey and the black, up to the grey, that is what Council's normal operating budgets are. So those are the budgets that um, Council's used historically and in the future to deliver all our normal services, so mow the parks, keep the streets clean, um, run the libraries and the art galleries and the museums and so on. Um, of course we've still got all that to do and that's the work the Mayor talked about that the Council's worked through over the last year or so. Um, determining what the levels of those services are, and this plan indicates how much they will cost. Um, but then the, the green bars at the top show how much our business has grown because of the earthquake. Um, so we're far from business as usual, and, and we've actually stopped using that term because it's better to talk about the normal services we provide and um, the, the earthquake rebuild that we're doing on top of that. 
So those bars on top just show you, and, and it's more than doubled the size of our total operating budget um, from usual time, normal times of about 600 to 650 million up to about 1.4 billion when you take into account all the infrastructure rebuild and the major community facilities that the, um, that the council's investing in. So just move on and firstly talk a little bit about the normal council services. So they, they were the services at the bottom part of the bars on the previous chart. Um, because these are the ones that we forget about quite a lot and, and they're a significant part of our organisation. The council spent a lot of time, the elected members have spent a lot of time over the last year considering every one of these services. And the Mayor talked about 53 groups of activities, so that's how we, um, how, how we group the services we do, just to, so we can understand them better. Um, but under those, there's some six to 700 individual measures that we track and that the councillors ask us to deliver to the community. Um, and this just gives you an idea of some of the broad groups of services that we provide. So everything from, as I said, the provision of roads and footpaths, keeping them clean, um, resealing them, through cultural and learning services, so that's the art galleries, the libraries and so on. If I go around to things like community support, so that's the, the community grants that the council provides to a number of organisations, um, and civil defence is included in there. Um, water supply, sewage, and so on. So that that chart there makes up about 600 million of our 1.4 billion dollar budget. And on top of that, of course, we've got the earthquake costs to to worry about. Um, so the the next few slides, I'm just going to take you through how we've chunked those down and how we're. Um, planning to fund those over the next few years and then on to the next uh, 30 odd years. And there's three major parts to this. Firstly, we've got an operating deficit. I'll come back to these and explain them in more detail. Then we've got the response and recovery costs, partly for the emergency response itself, which um, happened in 2011, and um, then the, the costs of the rebuild and the major community facilities. So if I just start with the operating deficits, there was, there was um, we, we talked about this during last, the, the last plan we did. Straight after the earthquakes, we realised that we were going to be impacted um, on our normal services side in, in a couple of ways. Firstly, our revenues were going to drop because there are a number of revenue um, sources that we had that were just no longer there. Um, and the two biggest ones were the parking revenue that we got out of the central city. So all the, for, for the on-street parking, and we have a number of off-street parking, and that was about $6 million a year. Um, and the second one was the dividends that we get from our investments. Um, so Christchurch City Holdings Limited hold, a, hold a, a range of trading companies, and very early on, they were heavily impacted by the earthquake. So you had the likes of Orion, their revenues had dropped, so the dividend that the council was getting, which effectively subsidised rates, um, wasn't going to be as, as big. So when we looked at that initially, um, that was about $83 million worth of deficits over a three-year period that we had forecast. And what we've found is um, a couple of years has gone by. There's two things. Um, one is that the, the deficits aren't quite as big as we thought they were going to be, but they are going to last for longer. So. The 83.4 million over three years, we're now forecasting to be 85.6 over five years. Um, and what we've done to fund that is two years ago we introduced a special earthquake charge. And that was 1.76 initially, but because this is the, the length of time has gone up and the amount of deficits have gone up, um, we're, we're proposing to increase that to 1.93% this year. So that's the operating deficit. The next part is the response and recovery costs. And this first chart just shows you what those response and recovery costs are made up of. Tony mentioned the figure of 4.4 billion. Um, and that's, the, that's what this chart represents. And there's three main parts to that. Firstly, council had a massive amount of cost that we incurred immediately when the earthquakes happened. So these were the costs of 
um, implementing temporary sewage systems, clearing the silt from the streets, filling in the potholes and the cracks that had, that had opened up. It's none of the permanent repairs, but it was really the cost of managing that emergency and making sure our community's welfare was well looked after. Um, those costs are significant, and they're not all over. Um, they're substantially over. I think we, we've incurred probably four to five hundred million dollars worth of these now. But some of those temporary sewage systems and temporary traffic management systems and so on are still in place. So we will continue to pay for those until the rebuild program comes along and replaces them with permanent infrastructure. So that's that first six hundred and fifty-four million. The second part is the really big number, and it's, it's the, the piece that's really going well now um, through the work that both the Council and SKIRT, which is the Alliance, um, are doing out on our roads, and you, can, you don't have to drive far to see the work that they are doing. So this is the $2.6 billion worth of roading and underground works that, that's going on. Um, we're spending it between 40 and $50 million a month, about $1.5 million a day, um, to get on and get our infrastructure back to a, to a state that it was before the earthquakes. And the last piece of that is um, facilities and other. Um, the facilities are the 1,600 facilities Tony mentioned before. The other are some of the other works that aren't immediately covered in our infrastructure works, like damage to our parks and gardens. Um, the walking tracks in the Port Hills, um, some of the tracks out here in Hagley Park, some of, the, that work, some of those um, capital works you can't insure. So we've covered those in this um, pool of funds. And of course, each of these pool of funds have different funders. Um, and this next slide just shows you where the relative funding shares are. So the first one is, the first bar there is the infrastructure rebuild, and the blue at the bottom is the 60% that Tony was talking about, that we're expecting um, the Crown to fund for that. Um, we're still in those conversations. The Mayor talked about um, getting to that firm agreement, but at the moment, um, the legislation that's in front of us indicates that the Crown will fund 60%. Um, there is an amount of insurance that we had on our underground infrastructure. It was capped at around $200 million, and that's been paid, so we've got that to put towards it. Um, and the last piece is the piece that Council has to fund. So if I move to the next one, which is the facilities and other, um, the, you can see this is largely insurance funded because most of our buildings are the most insurable assets we have. So they were well insured right up to their replacement value. As the Mayor said, the Council has resolved to make a number of improvements to those. So those improvements are a cost to the Council. It's like when you do the work on your own house, your insurer will pay for the earthquake cracks, but if you want um, the entire room painted, that's something that you would have to fund yourself. We're in a similar situation, and um, in many respects the Council has gone further than that because they're making some decisions to strengthen a lot of our buildings, to bring them up to a standard that they, they see as fit for our community. And the last piece there is, are those emergency and response costs. And you can see there's a, there's a heavy government subsidy on those of about 400 million. Um, we received uh, the, the last payment this week of 30 million from uh, the Ministry of Civil Defence, um, which, was, which was great to have in the bank. So if I just move on now to how we're going to fund those. Um, so we've, we've got a, over a billion dollars of borrowing against that $2.6 billion that we're going to have to take on in the short term. And the way we've looked at that is that we would usually be renewing all these assets over a very long period of time. Some, some of them are 20-year assets, some of them might be 80 years for some sewage systems. So what we usually do is we set aside a certain amount of money each year for those renewal programs. So obviously because they're all going to be renewed as part of the Alliance work, we're, we're going to reduce the amount that we're putting to those renewals and use that to repay the debt that we're going to have to take on to, to pay for this in a shorter term. So in simple terms, if you like, we're doing about 25, 25 years worth of renewals in a five or six year period. That means it's far costlier early on, but it means we don't have to do the work in the longer term. So what we've said is, well, we can take that debt on, and the money that we would have spent on that infrastructure otherwise, we'll use to repay that debt over the longer term. 
And, and we've estimated that's going to take us 26 years to repay. That's well within the council's policy of 30 years of repaying this debt. And of course, we've got brand new infrastructure for it in a shorter time frame. And the last piece of the financial strategy is the, the major community facilities. Um, this is that $892 million that the council's committed to that the mayor mentioned before. Of that 892, 367 million is going to be paid for by our insurers, and that is to replace the buildings on a like-for-like -like basis. But as you know from looking at some of the, um, the, the posters around the room, we're replacing those facilities with some much better facilities, so a bigger convention centre, um, a much bigger multi-sport hub, and so on and so forth. So that means we have to put um, around $400 million of council's money into these, and that's come from a number of sources. Firstly, as the Mayor mentioned, we already had some of this budgeted in our long-term plan. So in the long-term plan, there was already a new library for the central city. So we've been able to say, that's already budgeted, we can just bring it forward a wee bit. Um, there's also a fund that the council's allowed to improve its buildings. So buildings like the town hall, where the council's made a decision that they do want to save that, but to bring it up to current building standards is going to require a substantial investment. So they, they allowed a fund for that. The remainder, which is about 160 million, um, you may recall last year in the annual plan, Council brought in a major community facilities charge of 1.84%. It was a one-off in the 2012-13 the year. That raised about $6 million. And using that $6 million, because now that we're collecting it, we collect it every year. So over 30 years, that $6 million will repay that $160 million that we hadn't budgeted. Um, and bring us back to the same financial position.